<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and right here we have a PlayStation 2. Uh, if it's not obvious enough from the way it looks, the PS2 or the PlayStation 2 right there. What we're going to be doing is we are going to be soft modding this system. So welcome to this video and kind of the series I have now in a way where I don't have tutorial over what I'm doing. Uh, but I show you all what I do start to finish and just kind of talk about it the whole time. Uh, people really enjoy this when I did it with the Xbox 360 JTAG, so I figured I'd do the same thing with the PS2. Now, for anybody that actually wants a tutorial over how to do what I'm doing right here, uh, good news, this video is coming out months after I filmed the footage. Uh, this PlayStation 2, I did buy it, but this is going to be for a friend of mine. I'm going to give it to him as a surprise in a few months from the date I'm recording this right now. Uh, but sometime prior, sometime between me filming all this and me releasing this video, I will have a tutorial. I'll make sure I have a tutorial showing how to set up everything on here. So I'm going to link it either somewhere in the video description or somewhere on screen, and you all can watch a full tutorial over how to do this. But this video right here is more for entertainment purposes and just kind of for fun. Um, so right here, we have a PlayStation 2. I picked this up on eBay for a very good price, I feel like. Um, and I end up getting uh, this cap. There goes the controller, uh, this power cable, this audio video cable. Look how short this power cable is, by the way. Thought that was funny. Um, and a controller, which I don't have on screen right now. Uh, it didn't come with a memory card, but because of actually another PS2 bundle I got, I got like four memory cards with those. Uh, so I'm gonna give my friend another memory card, uh, or no, I'm gonna give him a second controller, I'm gonna give him a memory card, and we're gonna be installing Free McBoot on here. And now the reason why I'm not doing a hard mod on this is because uh, I could modify, I could install a mod chip, I actually have I think a couple mod chips right here, um, but really all that's going to accomplish is it will allow us to play burned PS1 and PS2 games, which is great, but you can do a lot more with a soft mod uh, with Free McBoot. Yeah, you could install the hard mod on there and you could also soft mod the system. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, however, knowing my friend, I know he's going to definitely prefer the benefits and the ease of having the soft mod of PS2 over a solely hard mod one. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, this right here, the PS2, I haven't done anything to it aside from unbox and kind of touch it. Um, I have tested it, it does work, I can verify that. Uh, but it's a little bit dusty, it's a little bit scuffed up. As you can see, um, it looks like somebody attempted to open it because the warranty seal is slightly void. And that doesn't matter anymore. Uh, and it is a SCPH 39001 model. Um, so a slightly newer revision than the PS2 that I had. Neat. The expansion bay port is right there. And interesting, this is not the type of expansion bay thing that comes with the uh, metal shielding right here. This is just plastic. Uh, but we're going to be getting rid of this anyways because we are going to pop a hard drive in there. But as you can see, this thing is a little bit dirty and nasty. So um, I've already verified it does work. And uh, it plays games, all that fun stuff. But I want to clean this. I'm not happy with the physical condition it's in. Uh, and also just, I mean, you can see the dust on the inside and all that stuff. So... Uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and start taking this apart and cleaning it up. Uh, now, I've only opened up a PS2 once in my life, and it was just to clean a laser for a friend. Uh, so I don't really know what I'm doing, uh, but we're going to figure it out along the way. It'll be a fun time. Uh, there's going to be probably a bunch of cuts, though, because I don't want to show every little intricate detail. Uh, really, the only thing I remember for sure is, let's see, do these come off? Yes. Okay. So there's screws underneath all of these points right here underneath all the little footies and we are going to have to void the warranty right there which I mean some people can bypass it I understand that but I just I don't I don't care is the thing and he doesn't care about the warranty either it's a PlayStation 2 this thing is long past Sony's 10-year plan to support the system so I mean we're good we're good we're good uh, let me go ahead and get my toolkit out and uh, we'll start taking this apart and I'll see how far I can get before I need to find a guide on here. All right, and then this vo warranty seal right here. Again, I just really don't care all too much, so I'm going to rip this thing off. You know, funny story, um, the first modded PS2 I ever bought, it was from a friend of mine, and he sold it to me for $20. And the reason why is because he tried to sell it to a game shop, and they would not take it because the warranty seal was not on there. But I knew his PS2 was modded, he didn't care about it, he sold it to me for 20 bucks. Some people might be asking what happened with that. I actually resold it back to him for the same amount of money uh, because I think his girlfriend's parents' place burned down 
and uh, they were looking to replace some stuff, and they wanted to replace the game systems for the kids. So he asked me how much it was. I was like, dude, I can't, I can't give you, a, like, I, I can't make money off you. Just give me the same amount of money that I gave you, and we'll be good. Looks like there is a screw there. It feels like there's a screw at least. So let's go ahead and pop this thing off. So first off, what I do want to do is I want to take off the uh, drive assembly itself here. It's just, I'm kind of trying to get the points and feel how it is. Uh, I'm going to at least take these little screws off. Will this work? Will big screw work? Well, big thing. No, that will not. So I remember like one of the first times I saw a PS2 open, I actually went to a GameStop and they had a PS2 opened and they were like flipping it upside down because I guess it had, they were trying to do a swap trick or the dis the the system was just having issues reading discs. I don't remember what it was exactly, but I just thought it was really funny that they were ripping the whole system apart and they were trying to do all this upside down. But that was unfortunately kind of a common thing with these PlayStation 1 and 2 systems, um, where people had disc read issues and the fix was, hey, flip it upside down, it should work. All right, let's see, there we go. That's to be expected, all right, cool. And it looks like we have access to the drive right here. So it is a little bit dirty and nasty. Um, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, see what all I can do with that. And um, okay, and that way we are able to completely release the drive tray. Interesting. All right, that makes sense. Cool. So I'll be honest too, I feel pretty comfortable taking all this apart just because I know if I screw something up, the PS2 is so old and so popular that I don't have to worry about finding any type of documentation on how to rip this thing apart or that thing apart, whatever it is. Um, so, so honestly, I'm looking at the drive here and aside from the spindle, it looks clean enough. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some Q-tips and some uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, we're gonna get this thing cleaned up here a bit. All right, so I got my Q-tips, I got my uh, isopropyl alcohol. Let me uh, actually pour some up real quick. And I use 99%, which you can actually order off, I think, Amazon or probably eBay and anywhere, really. And what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. So there's just some hair there, there's a little bit of dust. We're just kind of going over this. Honestly, that's not bad, like, at all. I'm actually impressed with how clean this system is for how old it is. All right, let me get to the spindle as well, too. All right, and yeah, that thing's dusty. It's definitely dusty, but this th this thing's seen better days, but again, it's how old at this point? It's probably about 15 years old. This thing would be a moody teenager. And uh, let me also go ahead, yeah, this thing needs minimal attention, honestly. The disk drive works, it works very well, it loads up fast, so I'm not concerned about having to replace the laser or doing anything else. I just want to clean it. And there we go, that's about all the work I feel like I need to do on the disk drive right here. So, since we have that, let me go ahead and I'm going to put these two screws back in and I'm just going to close up the disk drive. Um, because at this point, I actually did look it up a little bit while I was looking around for my uh, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, we're going to have to remove the assembly right here, which I'm trying to look and see where exactly that's going to go. We'll figure it out. Again, I'm not too worried. It's PlayStation 2. It's old. All right, so what I will do here, I will take an old towel. I normally take like an old towel or an old shirt and kind of just, you know, clean up the uh, components like this. So I'll go ahead, screw this all back in. Since this is the actual drive itself, uh, we can take the whole assembly out and it doesn't look like we're gonna need to do all too much else on here. So it looks like that just kind of pops out. That's cool. Oh, all right. Everything comes out now. Cool. All right, so if we take that out, interesting, interesting. No, I've never, Never gotten this far with a PS2, honestly, so this is all new to me. And there we go. That is a lot of history. I'll put it like that. That's a lot of history. <laughs> all right, cool. So we got that. Let me also, can I take out this fan? So now that we have that, I'm going to at least remove the bottom right here. Let's bring this over. Again, I'm being really careful with that ribbon. I just don't want it to completely rip apart or anything. But I'm looking for any other screws that might be here. 
All right, so this is actually interesting. We're supposed to take off the power supply here. So what I'm gonna do for this is I'm just going to, again, get my screwdriver and I'm going to unscrew these right here, if I can. There we go. I could tell no one's ever gotten this far because that screw was definitely bolted in, just like all these other screws. There we go. It's like, you know, with the first time you ever take apart a piece of electronics and it just hasn't been um, taken apart ever. So those first turns are hard, but once you get it all off, it's, it's fine. And finally, let's get this off. Again, we're having the, uh, the last screw issue. <laughs> it's always the last one that gives you the most trouble for whatever reason. There we go. I just cheated by getting a little bit of tension, right? Well, a little more tension, but I think we're okay with that. And let's see, can we take that off? All right, so there we go. We end up disconnecting that. And I have that pulled out. Looks like we're good there. This whole thing is just, this is a maze. This is hilarious. All right, so we got that, cool. And honestly, I'm kind of judging if we need to go any further. That's why I'm kind of considering that. Because honestly, as long as we can really blow this out with a decent amount of air. I'm not too worried about it overall. All right, so we took that out. I'm also going to remove, well, before I remove those ribbons, I'm going to work on getting a few of these pulled out. So we got the power supply. That'll be okay. We're gonna give this system a really good clean. I was thinking of half-assing it, but I'm like, no, I really don't wanna do that. This will be a fun time. And also I wanna make sure, you know, my friend gets a good system. Again, the thing is working. It's just dirtier than I'd like it to be, so. That's why I'm kind of going out of my way to clean this damn thing. So I didn't want to bore you with all the little details, but um, long story short, look, this is the PlayStation 2. Ended up taking it fully apart, and I have to say, uh, definitely more complex than a PlayStation 1, for sure. Absolutely more complex. Uh, I'm impressed with the design on it as well, too. I'm definitely impressed at the build design. Uh, much less annoying than a PlayStation 3, but uh, interesting to say the least, so... Um, the board is about as I expected, a tiny bit dusty, but honestly, we could have even gotten away with really not cleaning this. Um, but what I'm going to do anyways is, look, there's the Emotion Engine, EE. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab my, uh, it, what is it, the processor. I don't even remember what exactly it's called right now. Um, air compressor, that's, I'm going to grab my air compressor and uh, we are going to blow air all over the uh, parts that definitely need cleaning. And then we're going to put this back together and make sure I didn't screw up anything. All right, so what I did, I just took everything outside, blasted it with air. Uh, there's a hair right here, but uh, point is, you know, the motherboard, there wasn't really all too much I had to do to it, which I expected with something being just encased in carbonite is what it looked like. Uh, but everything else here uh, definitely looks a lot better. I mean, there's still a little bit of dust there, but a lot less than it was before. Um, so that's nothing that a towel cannot fix. So I'm going to... Uh, not the motherboard, of course, but I'm going to go over all of these points with a towel right here. Um, just to, you know, clean them up a little bit, get off the extra dust and all that fun stuff. And then we're going to work on putting this thing back together after we've refurbished it. So, uh, I feel good. I cleaned the drive a little bit. I made sure I hit the laser, cleaned that up as well, too. Uh, I didn't do anything. The only thing I didn't blast with air was the DVD drive because, you know, I don't want to blast that with air that's not a bad well that's not a good idea and uh, the other thing is too so my dog was just like watching me like what the hell are you doing but she handled uh the loud noises very well she really didn't care all too much for them she just wondered why i was what i was doing and why she's locked up and why i'm outside and making those weird noises but uh she was good point is she was very good so eh, the fan i'm not super worried about let's go ahead also clean this thing right here the hard drive bay. Oh, there's a good amount of dust in this because of all those little holes. Again, I tried to get it the best I could. Might be a little bit smarter to clean these while also rub these down outside, but you know what? I'm giving you all a show right here, so that's fine. And this piece right here, too. Oh, what did I do? There's screws. No screw. Okay, screws are still on the table. None of them were missing, so I think we're good on that. All right. Interesting. Um, oh, also the memory card holder and controller adapter, all that fun stuff. There's a few more pieces as well here too. This one I'll kind of just dab on. Uh, the power supply, I mean, yeah, the power supply looks fine for the most part. Huh, it was a little bit sticky there, but that's fine. 
this piece really don't want to touch because of the um, heat shrink type stuff. Well, not heat shrink, but just the cooling type stuff for the emotion bolt chip and all that. This was probably the dirtiest piece I found. Um, so, this can be understandable because this thing sucks up all the dust. So what I'm gonna do, again, just going to go over all the insides here with the towel. And then what I'm gonna do is I don't want to, uh, I'm not gonna throw this one in the washer or anything, uh, but what I'll be doing is uh, I'm gonna clean this with Windex and uh, just the outside, I'll clean it with Windex and uh, touch up on it a little bit just to make it look nicer uh, for our final touches. So I think that'll be okay. Again, I'm more concerned with the inside right now, the outside I'll worry about later, uh, but all those look clean. So now I'm going to work backwards and put this all back together. Uh, then I'm gonna let my dog out too so she can actually have some fun with me. All right, so I'm almost done putting this back together and man, I have uh, I've been annoyed with this. Uh, I'm about to uh, just put it together and see if it is fully working, uh, but I kind of want to make note of this. So when I actually turned it on, uh, the disk drive was kind of jutting out a little bit. Um, it was kind of like that in a way, like it was exactly positioned like that and I could like freely move this a bit. And it was just constantly trying to eject and it was kind of moving this a bit when I turned it on. Uh, found out that was actually, that was my bad because as you could see, I had it a little bit forward. So what I do is I had to open this up again, remove the screws here and what I did, this is kind of just a learning experience. I've done this with a drive before. It was actually just a regular PC drive and I'll, while I'm here, I'll actually clean the tray up. Um, but it's the same type of concept as well too. So really it's just, this is your track right here. Well, no, this is one of the tracks and this thing, this locking mechanism, this lock and unlock mechanism was not synced up with it. As you can see, the drive is unlocked. It's in free mode. Now it's completely locked. So what I had to do is I had to rip this thing out, move it all the way over to the right, so made sure you know it was synced up with this, and then started loading the tray back in. Let's see if I can get it. But if we can get that, there we go. Well, in a way, if we can, it ended up going a little bit too soon. Yeah, that went way too soon. Let's see, I might actually have to push it. There we go. So I had to push it all the way over, load the tray back in, and then check this out. As you load it in slowly, you will have to bring this back over. Kind of, uh, you can also move this thing as well too, so you can move it like that, but don't move the physical tray. And there you go. And if it's fixed up, this thing should not unlock. So this is how the tray should be. So I'm going to go ahead and screw the tray back in place, uh, and then I'm going to put the system, at least cover it, and make sure that it works. And if it works, we've done a good job so far. All right, so I got the PS2. I know it's off camera right now, but if you can hear this, the disk drive opens and closes noticeably smoother than it did before. Uh, I can use controller one right here. That seems to be responding just fine. No data on there, of course, because I don't have any memory cards. So let me actually grab a memory card right here. I'm just gonna test everything real quick. Oh, this might be a kind of a faulty card. Let me grab one that I know for sure works. So pop it inside, there we go, memory card slot one. Pop it into slot two, yep, I'm gonna change the controller into slot two. I can press X. As you can see, Free McBoot is on here, but I'm gonna show you all a fresh install of it anyways. But the most important thing that we need to do is we need to actually test this and make sure that games work on this thing. So uh, let me try a few games real quick. All right, so not sure how much usage the disk drive will get here. Hopefully a good amount, but uh, I'm just popping in a PS2 game right here. Let's make sure this thing works. It's reading this, reading this, reading disk. There we go, PlayStation 2 disk. You should come up right here. And I have the sound muted, so I'm just kind of trying to commentate to compensate for that. But as you can see, it boots up. Let's make sure it reads fully whenever it pops up here. And there we go, Rockstar Games logo came up, all that fun stuff. Let's see if I can uh, show you all what the game is. Well, eventually. Point is, it does work, but spoiler alert, it's Max Payne 2, so the game does boot up. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm also going to try a PS1 game real quick. So you're going to see a different menu here because I have my free boot card on the system. But I'm going to go ahead, pop in a disc. Go ahead, check the browser, 
and it's reading, it's reading, it's reading. PlayStation disc, there we go. So PlayStation and PlayStation 2 discs are working on there. Yeah, I could go out of my way to check to see if a blue back disc worked, but I don't know, my logic is if PS1 games are working, it should probably be okay since PS1 games are going to be CD-ROMs, so. As you can see, it's booting up the game just fine. There's no issues on that, so sweet. I'll go ahead, pop this thing out. Let's restart the system. Well, turn it back on right here. And we are good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on getting the system all cleaned up and looking a little bit nicer. So not sure how well you all can see this, but uh, just showing you the PS2, it is fully assembled again. Uh, it is looking much less nasty. Like just look at those fan get rates right there. There's uh, a lot less stuff and a lot less gunk in there. And uh, same with this, you know, everything's looking a lot ni nicer, a lot cleaner. Uh, and also, I wanted to make sure I fully assembled this, uh, just because I have to do something right here uh, that might interfere. So, uh, let's go ahead and uh, do what we've been needing to do. Hey, Lily. You ready to come out? Sorry. Sorry it took me so long to work on the PS2. And you're free! You're free, puppy! You're free! See, I didn't want to bring her out because she would be, you know, distracting me and wanting attention, like, right now and all that stuff. Yeah, how's that, how's that taste? How's that smell? Also, I had screws like all over the table there, so I really didn't want her to, you know, eat any of them. So yeah, Lily, what did you think of it? She didn't care about it all too much, so I'm gonna hang out with my dog for a bit and then we'll be working on this again. Alright, so here we are in the kitchen with the PlayStation 2. The reason why I'm here is because we're gonna be messing with liquids and such. Uh, I might even get a little bit of water, I'll explain that. But uh, there's a few things I use to clean the system. Uh, first off, just, um, I mean, really three things. Uh, some paper towels. Uh, Windex, I, I use actual Windex, not the cheapo stuff, and uh, Magic Eraser as well too. Uh, so normally what I will do is um, I'll just take some of the paper towels right here, and this should be easy enough. We're going to take these, and I don't really want to spray the system directly, um, I mean you can if you want, but since this is, uh, you know, since this is assembled, I'm not going to do that. And I just spray this a bit. Well, kind of drench it, but when it's on there, we're going to get this super clean. So what this is going to do is, I'm le doing this thing where I'm leashing my dog right now, that's why I have this thing on me. <laughs> but, um, no, what this does is this just going to, you know, clean up any oils, residue, all that nasty gunk and stuff. Uh, you know, just like any type of handprints or whatever. And you can go over this a few times if you really want to. It doesn't matter all too much, but the point is we want to hit the surfaces that we can find and make sure this thing gets all nice and clean. As you can see, it's not even that bad, but it is changing color a bit. It is becoming a bit brown, which is to be expected with a old used console like this. That's totally expected. So I'm going to go ahead and get all that stuff right there. All right, and we can get the bottom as well too. And now this is kind of dirty. I'm actually going to uh, go over it one more time. And now that that is kind of dirty, I'm actually going to kind of bundle this up and go over this one more time. I don't think we really need to, but uh, just to clean this up, I really don't mind. So definitely, again, wants to get this, especially on a system like this, um, since it has, you know, all these crevices, it wouldn't really hurt to use like an old toothbrush to clean this out, although this doesn't look all too bad to me, admittedly. Uh, I've seen a lot worse, so I think we're good on that. Um, but yeah, just kind of go ahead and get these if you ever run out of Windex. Just spray a little bit more on there. See, that's why I'm so generous with it. <laughs> um, go ahead and get the rest of these here again. So I've been going over this twice. Alrighty. And the bottom again. I'll go ahead and grab that. And that should all be fine. So now, I'm not sure if you're seeing that, but uh, we gotta let this dry for a little bit. But it's even like touching the system. It doesn't feel gross or grimy or nasty anymore. It actually feels really clean. Uh, we need to wait for all this to dry up here. I mean, you're seeing the little spots, but even as that's going away, um, you're just really not seeing the handprints. Are those my handprints? Yeah, I think they are. <laughs> uh, point is on here, I promise the surface is much cleaner and it's even a little bit shiny now. 
that we weren't having before. So we've definitely restored some life to this system. Uh, now the second thing we can do is we could also take the Magic Eraser, as I said. Um, so with Magic Eraser, you don't want to hit any designs like this or any logos because those can go away and you really don't want to do that. So the easy way to do it here is, this is why I mentioned the water, um, I'll go ahead and do it on the back. You see like these little scuffs and such right here actually. So my camera's not really doing the best job but as you can see, well now it's showing it a little bit better, it was just the angle. Um, as you can see, there's just like a lot of little like scuffs and scratches right here. Uh, what this does, the uh, Magic Eraser, it's going to eliminate that. So the best thing to do is not drench this, but just put a little bit of water on it. That's why the sink came in handy. And we're just kind of going to, since it's the bottom, I don't care as much. But we're just going to clean this up right here. And what this does is this just ends up scraping away a little bit of the layers and it makes it look much nicer it gets rid of all those little scuffs and all that stuff so again i'm not going to use this on logos or sticker stickers or anything in particular but as you can see we got that kind of just did a bit of a once over right here and i want to wait for this to dry as well too this is probably going to take a few runs of the uh uh, of the Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, but uh, let's see. So that was just with one layer uh, done, and as you can see, that scuff is noticeably has noticeably gone away. Uh, these ones are going away as well too, but I didn't spend nearly as much time on them. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, run this over with the uh, Magic Eraser a few more times and uh, get this all nice and cleaned up, and I'll show you the results afterwards. So right here we're back. I'll try and uh, get it the best I can, but uh, as you can see, uh, you know, the scuff, like that stuff is still a little bit noticeable. If I really worked on it, I could. Um, the thing is with this as well too, um, you kind of just want to go over all if you can, because if you really focus on one area, then that area will be just a little bit more dull compared to the rest of the console. Um, so I was just kind of trying to do it overall, but I'm just kind of showing you really a good before and after where you can really barely notice the scuffs on that. So there's also a scuff up here that I want to get rid of. Um, I'll probably get rid of, you know, this warranty void sticker right here while the residue. And uh, then up here on the top of the console, let me actually focus in on this a little bit if I could. Um, if you look right here, so there's, kind of show you all that, uh, there's a scuff right there. There's just, you know, a few regular scuffs on the top of the system because it's a PS2 and that's normally how they game. Uh, so I'm also going to work on the top here and get this all uh, unscuffed as best as I can. All right, so we're back here. What I did was I used the uh, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser kind of all over the system. Uh, let me just adjust this here. I used it all over and then I did another once over with Windex and some paper towels and I just dried off the excess stuff with a regular towel that I have right there. Um, but as you can see, the system's looking much nicer than it did before. It's nice, it's shiny, it's clean. Now, that scuff, like that one, is still there. A few of the bad scuffs are still noticeable. Honestly, if I sat here for like 20 or 30 minutes, I could probably, you know, get it almost all the way gone, but some of them might just stay there. That's fine. Um, as you can see, the front of the system, that's looking good as well, too. Let's go ahead and look at the bottom. No one's ever going to look at this, but, you know, that's looking better. The back of the system, at this other bottom, I guess you could say. I don't know which one would be the bottom, depending on where you put it. Normally I just sit my system, you know, uh, horizontally. If this focuses, damn it, my camera won't focus. Damn you, autofocus. But point is, that's looking much nicer as well too, as you can see, and the top right there, at the weird angle I have it. So yeah, the system is, I would say, refurbished at this point. So what's next? Well, look, I really don't want to drop it. There we go, fat system. Now we have to actually modify it. So we are going to be modding it with free McBoot and we're also going to be putting a hard drive in there as well too. Uh, so there's going to be a few more parts of this video. They'll all be in here, but with the power of editing, you'll see them quite soon. Seriously guys, look at it. Lily's <laughs> just being so lazy. This is incredible. I love my dog. All right, so it's the next day here and I've been working on several videos, one of which being uh, PS2 soft modding and such. So uh, I figured I'd do this as well and uh, show you all the process. So uh, got my PS2 hooked up, got Wolf Wolf hanging out over there. She's being a good dog. And uh, yeah, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead, 
turn on the PlayStation 2. Let me also actually turn up the sound this time around so we have something to listen to. Prior, uh, I think my soundbar had switched uh, inputs and I didn't know, so that's what was going on. But um, either way, we're just going to fire this up, and we have a few things right here. Uh, one of them being, you know, our memory cards, and the other one right here uh, being our flash drive. The flash drive, all I did was copy the entire uh, 1.95 free McBoot newbie package onto it. So that's really all that is. Kind of just pop that in. And for anybody who's going to be wondering how to do this, I definitely, as I said, I mean, the video's done. There's going to be a tutorial on how to do this if you have a non-modded PS2. But if you have a modded PS2 or you already have a copy of Free McBoot, I'm going to show you how to easily do this right here. So that's the method we're going to try. Lily. Lily, stop biting yourself. Lily. She's stuck. Alright, so uh, we got the PS2 here. I did end up uh, adding the hard drive in the back right there, but uh, we have our card that has free boot on it already, flash drive that has the newbie package, and uh, this card that we're going to be installing free boot onto. So let me go ahead, fire this thing up. There we go. Now, I've been, uh, I don't have a component cable on hand, and I was trying to upscale using SCART actually, but um, it doesn't seem to be working very well for this, um, so. What I'm going to be doing is we are just using, oh, it would absolutely help, you know what, it would really help out if I actually plug this in. Um, I'm just going to be upscaling from uh, Composite, which won't look the best, but we're really not playing any games here. We're just going to be showing the process itself. So there we go. Prima Boot comes up. I'm going to go down to Ulaunch Elf, press X right here, and this should now pop up. Eventually. There we go. So I'm going to go to the file browser. Let's go over to USB storage mass. And I'm going to launch the installer. Now we just have to wait a few seconds. I believe it should have booted at this point. Oh, there we go. It's flickering. It's thinking about it. It's trying to. And, huh, interesting. Alright, so it's not a video output issue, is what it seems like. I'm going to try and recopy the newbie package over, because I have tried this about four times. Uh, I haven't filmed all of them, but I've tried this about four times, and uh, this will not read on this PS2 for whatever reason. Um, it just keeps crashing right there, so I'm going to recopy it. Let's give that a shot. Alright, just showing you all my process right here. I'm going to go ahead, take this, format it. And do FAT32, just default, start, yes. All right, that's done. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this, go over to my PS2 directory, and it's inside of here. And I'm just going to rip all of these. So copy, pasta right there. And it looks like that's done. All right, so I'm going to right click, eject that. Let's try this again. Um, that's exactly what I was doing before, but let's try it again. All right, so we're here again. We're going to try this newbie package. Let me pop the flash drive in the PS2, if I can actually do this with one hand. There we go. All right, turn it on. Boop, there we go. And let's wait a few seconds. Here's also another cool trick. Check this out. There we go. If flash drive flashes after a few seconds, that means Free McBoot is working properly. But I'm going to come over here. We got Free McBoot running. Let's go down to U Launch Elf. Press X on that. And our file manager option should come up right here momentarily. There we go. File browser. Mass. Free McBoot installer. And let's wait for that to load up. So my PS2 grew. Not really, but I ran into the most peculiar issue. Um, as you all saw, I tried the same memory card, same flash drive, and it was not working on this PS2, the one I'm giving to a friend. Um, I couldn't launch that uh, FCM FMCB installer for whatever reason. Uh, but I ended up grabbing another PS2 that I had, and check this out. It actually ended up loading right here. So I have no idea what the issue was, but the point is we're going to go ahead and install it onto this memory card. 
So I'm just going to pop the memory card I want to install this to in the second slot. Uh, I'm going to go over R1, R1, format memory card. We're going to format the card in slot 2. Yes. That's done. Alright, and now I want to do a multi-install of Free McBoot. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to install to slot 2 and say yes. Now this needs to do its thing. As you can see right here, I'm just going to wait a little bit. It's now copying everything from that flash drive over to my card in slot 2, if this thing will actually focus. Just waiting on that. And thankfully it doesn't take all too long, but it is kind of slow just because this is going from a like USB 1.0 port to a small memory card. And... There we go, it's done. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit out of this, go ahead and quit the program, and let's wait for this to come up. You launch elf should come back up. Thank you for breathing, Lily. I really appreciate it as I'm recording a video. Alright, so let's check the memory card right here. This is slot 2. And as you can see, it has the bare necessities, but we want a few more things on there as well, too. Alright, so I'm going to go over to you launch elf again. And we still need that uh, newbie package, but wait for this to pop up. There we go. I'm going to go to my file browser. I'm going to go to mass, install, and I need to copy this boot directory. And I need to paste it into MC1 right there. And we're going to overwrite the already existing boot directory. So now we need to wait about a minute for this and it's going to copy over the rest of the apps that we need. And then we're going to go ahead and try out this card on the uh, original PS2, the PS2 that I'm going to be giving to my buddy. Alright, so now that's done, uh, I'm going to go ahead right here, as you can see we got everything, turn off this PS2, and let's pop this into the PS2 down here, same with the controller, and I'm going to pop the cables over. Alright, so we have everything we need right here. Um, I have a 500 gig hard drive that I purchased uh, installed in there, and I actually just used it for the demo, so uh, or for the tutorial I made. Um, so it's been formatted to 48-bit HD loader using WinHip. Uh, it does have a few games on there. I'm going to take them off uh, before you know I do the rest of this stuff. But just making sure this works, and I do have to configure this as well. So I'm going to come down here. He will be using Open PS2 Loader, and we need to configure it for the first time because we've never used it on this system. And there we go. Alright, so first I need to go over to Settings, um, Enable Write Operations, let's see, Select Button is Cross, uh, Check USB Game for it, no, nothing for that. Uh, the USB device start mode, no. Hard drive device start mode. Um, I'm going to have that auto, or actually even USB. I'll do that as well too, just in case he uses something for USB. Uh, the default menu, I'm going to have it be hard drive games. Display settings, let's see. Um, automatic refresh enable cover art. Auto, widescreen, I'll turn that on. Hit OK. I'm going to save the changes. Alright, and let's go over to our games list. There we go, hard drive games. Oh, because we enabled that, so actually what I'm going to do just to... Uh, well, no, that should be fine, actually. It's going to default to hard drive games. So, we have a few games right there. Let's go ahead and try to fire up... I don't know, let's try Twist Metal Black, since I enjoy that game so much. And there we go. It looks like it's running. I see no issues with that. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to restart this console just to make sure that everything is working as expected. So optimally what he should do is turn the thing on. Everything is going to boot up. We'll come over to the free McBoot menu right here. Once it comes up, there we go. He'll have to go down to open PS2 loader, otherwise known as OPL.
All right, and right there, it automatically booted into hard drive games. Perfect, that's exactly what I wanted from it. So I think we're good on that. Anyways, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wipe the hard drive, see what I need to do this. I'll actually, I'll show him how to use it and all that fun stuff. But uh, I think we're good on that. So that's really all there is to it. We've purchased this PS2, we've ended up refurbishing it so it looks a lot nicer. Before I send it out to him, uh, well, before I give it to him, I'm going to also definitely uh, clean it up again just to give it a once over because as you can see I've kind of got some smudges on it but yeah he's got a official PS2 memory card um, the SATA adapter a 500 gigabyte hard drive in here his PS2 is great at this point I'm also gonna turn this off just so it doesn't bug us but anyways this is Mr. Mario signing off thank you all for watching everyone if you enjoyed this video a like would very much be appreciated if you absolutely hated it the dislike is fine as well too